Hey everybody, it's Mike here with another installment of Jealous Lawn Care. All right, and today we are going to talk about some fungus disease problems. All right, and I have a little bit in my backyard. Front yard's doing pretty good. I got no issues at all there. But for the backyard, I'm going to be using the Scott's Lung Fungus Control and putting it down with my Scott spreader here, broadcast spreader. And this should be good for 5,000 square feet, this one little bag. So, works pretty good. I'll show you what I'm talking about in the back here. So join me. And this was all weeds, so I'm still debating what I want to do with this as far as, you know, doing um, all pavers. Ideally, I'd like to get rid of these this little section here. It's a little impromptu as I'm walking back, so grass is fine on this side behind me. But what I want to do is I like to get rid of all these pavers because they're kind of, you know, not level anymore because, you know, when I bought the property, this, this is how it looks. So over time, this is like uh, almost 20 years old for the property, and it just gets unlevel after a while depending on how, especially depends on how good it was done originally. So what I'm going to do is get rid of all this because this is very hard to grow grass here. It's about as good as you can get already, and I'm not. At, I'm, I'm still not happy with it. This is about as good as you can grow the grass. I seeded this already in the past. Grow, it grew fine, but you know it's pretty spotty. And again, this is a very hard place to grow it because you only have maybe it's less than a foot, and realistically, there shouldn't really be grass here. You know, in my last house, what I did was I removed this all, and what I did was put like. Um, what do you call those lava rocks so I put a bunch of lava rocks down you know a nice border around it but rather than do that with this just to have a little strip there you know I figured the better thing to do would be since I'm gonna replace this whole pavers is just pave it and go all the way to the wall so that's what I'm gonna do once I price that out and figure out what type of pavers I like to go with I like to go with the biggest possible I would like to do concrete but that's quite a bit more expensive but so I'm gonna price it two out and see but You'll definitely see a video on that in the future, and especially this side. This side does not. It's even. This even grows even less because you got br two heat sources here. You got brick on this side, and brick pavers on this side. So the spot heats up so quickly, and the sun hits most of the side during the daytime. So realistically, it's a very hot spot, and very little stuff grows here. So realistically, so ultimately, what I like to do is rip out all this grass along here complete and get rid of all these pavers and get rid of this section here so this will all just be pavers and this is also a very hard spot for me to grow grass if you see in my uh, my yard walkthrough video that I've done in the beginning when I first started doing this YouTube is this section here is very hard for me to grow grass because of the fact so I ripped this all out you know and we did um, a vegetable garden here last year when my in-laws were here so what I want to do now is rip this out and do nice pavers and the reason this is hard for me to grow grass here is because of the fact that if I'm not absolutely diligent about picking up my leaves all the leaves from my whole backyard basically sweep to this corner because of the wind you know, it blows right into that corner piles up and I got some uh, loud cars in the front there sorry about that <laughs> my neighbor's got a big nice nice hot rod we love to been souping up for a while and looks real nice. Before I forget to mention, we left this one, I'm not sure if it's a weed or what you want to call it. You guys probably know a lot better than I do. So here's a close-up of it. We originally thought these were sunflowers because along with this vegetable garden here, I had sunflowers. And we're not sure if this is sunflowers or if this is some kind of weeds. I kind of don't think these are weeds. Or I'm sorry, I kind of do think it's some kind of weed. I don't think it's a sunflower, just because, I mean, look at it. I've never seen this many buds on a sunflower in my life. <laughs> so I, I can't imagine that. And it's coming up with these little yellow flowers on the ends. So here's a little zoomed in picture of it. So I'm not sure what those are. If you guys know, please tell me. Ruin the surprise for me and tell me what these are. But it's going pretty good on its own. I don't water back here, so. It is what it is. I guess we'll find out soon. But definitely, if you guys know, shoot it out in the comments. 
if it's something I want or something I don't want. You know, I'm not the expert in bushes and you know those types of things. All right, and now for the topic at hand. Everybody loves the impromptu videos, you know, stuff that I just find along the way and decide to talk about, right? That's what you're all here for. <laughs> so this is a spot that I've noticed that this year, the first year I've ever had this issue. I've got some brown patch going on, clearly. You can see a lot of this right here. And it's, and it's spread. This is about the end of it. There's not much anywhere else. You know, maybe you know, it ends about here. So I don't have it really anywhere else. It's just this little section here. But brown patch is a disease, you know, fungus. It will continually spread. You, so you want to avoid this if possible. So I'm a little bit late, as you can tell. I should have caught this earlier, but you know, we all have lives and things that come up. So unfortunately, I just let it go. And now I'm going to try and treat it as a curative process. So you know, ideally you put this, this lawn fungus control down, you put it down ahead of time. It's always better to put stuff down ahead of time before you see problems instead of afterwards like I'm doing right now. So I'm try, try to practice what I preach, but sometimes it just doesn't pan out, right? We all, we've all been there. We've all had things come up and plan things. So that's the spot I'm going to work on. So I'm going to show you guys update videos and how it worked out. So this Scott's lawn fungus control. It's a hard thing to say, Scott's Lawn Fungus Control. Say that three times fast. But anyways, this, this control that I'm using, this basically wants you to use four applications per year. They don't want you to do more than four, and they want you to do them in two to, two to three weeks. So I'm gonna do this first application now, then two to three weeks I'll do another quick little update, and we'll see where we're at, all right? And this is the best time to do it now. Uh, I'm sorry, actually the best time they use it is preventative. I'm using it curative, so I'm using it now. Right now it's end of August here in the Midwest. And ideally, if I wanted to prevent this, I would have put it down right on that middle of May, middle of May, end of May. And the reason this brown patch is coming up is because of the fact that this year in the Midwest, we've had a lot of strange activity this year because of the heat. So it got really, really hot and then cool, really, really hot and cool. So basically the grass, doesn't really know what to do. Should it come out of dormancy, go into dormancy, doesn't know what to do. So right now, it doesn't know what to do. So, you know, that's when when things are more prone. Just like the fact that when we get grass problems, or I'm sorry, just like just like people, you know, it we have a lower immune system when we don't get sleep. You know, the less sleep we get, the more the the weaker our immune system gets. It's kind of the same thing with grass. So best thing to do is to prevent this type of stuff and prevent from ourselves help our immune system by sleeping more eating right and stuff like that same thing with the grass good fertilizer good soil soil content and it'll be great all right so i'll shoot you guys an update later and you'll see how this went so you might be able to see behind me you might be able to see some of those cracks that i've got going so what i'm doing is awesome also in addition to a lawn control I'm also doing my driveway, resealing my blacktop. So there'll also be a video on that in case you're interested in doing that. Basically for curb appeal, you know, you want you want to get rid of your cracks in the driveway and reseal it every couple years, you know. So let's start this process. First step, get a better knife. Alright, so according to my Scott spreader. Looks like I am going to be using the directions. All right. So I'll, they have they have preventative rate and a normal rate. So normal rate is the curative rate. So that's what I'm going to be using because I need to cure it. So I'm going to be using a little bit more of this material than you would if you're doing it preventatively, like we all should be doing. So if you're doing it in like May, you do the preventative rate. All right, so let's set this. I'm gonna set it to four. And this should, this is gonna do 5,000 square feet. Yep. And this should do it perfectly. So I'm gonna fill it about halfway. I'm gonna do my front and my back, even though my front is fine. I don't have any issues with lawn fungus or any diseases in the front, but eh, might as well fill the whole bag. This way I can see the how much, how much I'm, uh, putting down at once.
can probably tell that I'm not moving as fast as I would normally with like fertilizer. And the reason for that is because I really want to make sure it's getting down in the deep. So it doesn't say you have to water it, but if you want it to work faster, you might as well water it in. So one more thing I wanted to mention is right now I'm putting this down. Really could put it down any time of the year, anytime you see these issues. But I just want to point out that this is the good time to start getting your uh, aeration practices in order. So early September is a great time to do your aeration overseeding. And I'll have a video on that also. I'll be doing aeration, overseed, start a fertilizer, and some morganite. We're going we're gonna to do everything. Let's go. Boost that lawn growth and health. All right. I'll see you guys next time.